punching through tons of snow are rows of menacing conical structures. This bizarre set of teeth are made of concrete and iron and range in size up to three feet tall. They stretch out over the remote mountaintops in a series of long clusters. But why were they built at such a remote location? And what could be their strange purpose? A clue as to what these rows of conical spikes are can be found in the valley below. A labyrinth of secret tunnels that stretch deep into the mountain itself lurk behind a hidden entrance built into the side of the valley disguised as a rock. When you look at it, it seems incredibly solid when it blends almost seamlessly into the background. Someone went to an incredible effort to build that here. Who built this bizarre alpine engineering? And what was its purpose? The answer lies in the uneasy peace that existed across Western Europe in the 1930s. Shaken by the carnage of World War I, the major European powers started to fortify their borders with elaborate defenses. All through Europe, you see these border defense lines. So these, this is a reasonable precaution by most European countries uh, that had genuine threats. Since 1931, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini's engineers had been constructing an ambitious solution to this problem a line of defenses that aimed to protect Italy over a thousand mile front through the Italian Alps, from Ventimiglia on the west coast to Fiume on the east. It was known as the Vallo Alpino, or Alpine Wall. Not started until 1938, this section of the Alpine Wall faced not a hostile enemy, but Mussolini's closest ally, Adolf Hitler's newly annexed Austria. Mussolini was rather distrustful of Hitler because he knew that Hitler had expansionist ideas in Germany and certainly had eyes on Austria. Now, this meant problems for the Italians because they had annexed uh, this one region of South Tyrol of Austria after 1918. Mussolini, understanding Hitler, knew that Hitler would likely want to demand this territory and could attack Italy and take the Tyrol. Since World War I, fast-moving tanks had become one of the most dominant weapons on the battlefield. And Germany were the masters at this type of warfare. How could the Italian Alpine defenses halt Hitler's mechanized army in their tracks? So the dragon's teeth, or the dentity drago, were wooden poles that were pounded into the ground and then cast cement around them, capped off with an iron pyramid or, or cone. This creates a barrier for which armored vehicles and troops cannot pass through, and effectively funneling a large armored force into effectively kill zones. The Italians designed an elaborate network of interconnected bunkers and guns to stop any German advance. And the strategy was called defense in depth. But would it work? The idea of having multiple layers of defense is that you'll slow down the momentum of an attack, making it much easier to repel. It's a series of strong points. It will stop and delay 
any enemy advance. This gives the defender time to move up uh, reserves for a counterattack. Hidden in the side of the mountain is the heavily camouflaged entrance to the Italian secret Alpine fortress. A fortified door to bunker number 20. The door opens up to reveal a network of passages that link secret rooms and machine gun posts. Local guide Ludwig Schupf knows just how dangerous it was. So we stay here in the machine gun room of the bunker number 20. And here inside were three soldiers. The room is outside of the rock. Here is beginning the rock, and here outside of the rock. And the soldiers know that they were the first people to die. The bunker was so well camouflaged to give the Italian soldiers the best possible chance of eliminating the enemy before they even had a chance to attack. They would cover the face of the bunker with a rock slurry material. You could not tell that this is not part of a cliff face until you're actually there, and then the guns open up on you. But how secure were the bunkers themselves? The bunkers were built using a vast amount of concrete, up to 13 feet deep in places. What they did was they actually built concrete in and amongst the rock units to try and utilize the fact that you've got these strong rocks either side of the pass and act as a natural defense and then build around that natural defense with some man-made fortifications. But why did Mussolini think that Hitler would attack here? On the Austrian side of the border, there is just a mule track, which wouldn't have supported the weight of a tank. But the Italians are worried that the Germans would construct a road into that region, allowing armored vehicles, tanks, and a large number of troops to pass into the area. Uh, yes, it's quite possible the Germans could send troops up here because that is, in fact, how they broke through mountain defense lines. But were these fortifications ever used? But with the fall of Mussolini and the advance of the Germans, the Vallo Alpino defensive structures were never actually used. The Italians just surrendered, and effectively, the Germans walked into northern Italy. The Vallo Alpino was actually, for the most part, very lightly guarded, and this would have been essentially uh, border troops. These are not your frontline troops, so it, it provided no real defense at all. The defending soldiers just gave up, and even though there was these very elaborate defensive structures that were constructed, in essence, they were never used and were useless. Ironically, the Germans incorporated the Vallo Alpino into their own defenses against the Allies, who were sweeping through Italy. But in the end, these extensive Alpine fortifications were never used. 